This video was sponsored by LastPass. Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sharing 10 amazing hidden features for your Samsung Galaxy Note 9. These features will surely enhance the use of your smartphone. So let's dive in and discover. All right, so for the very first uh, tip, uh, go to these settings, and then I want you guys to go to accessibility, and then from here, go into dexterity and interaction, and there's an option here that says easy screen turn on. So make sure this one is enabled. If you tap on this side, it's gonna take you into the details, and basically what this allows you to do is to turn on your lock screen without having to press any button on your smartphone or even the screen. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's turn this off, and I'm gonna bring my hand over the phone, move it over, and the lock screen opens right up. Okay, so that is an easy screen turn on. It's a fantastic feature. Now, before I move on to the next hidden feature, I wanna quickly talk about the sponsor of this video. LastPass is a free password management app that you can grab right now from the Play Store or the App Store, and of course, the links are down below. I don't know about you, but I hate trying to remember passwords for hundreds of different websites, and it drives me insane when I have to reset a password over and over again because I keep forgetting my passwords and getting locked out of my accounts. Well, that's all over because thanks to LastPass, I no longer have to write, remember, or reset my passwords. It allows me to save and keep track of all my passwords, keeps me sane, and puts all my passwords on autopilot. Now, LastPass will also autofill your credentials on mobile sites and apps for Android or iOS, so anytime you launch an app, LastPass will fill in the username and password for you, making it easy to log in. So go ahead and download it right now. It's a top class app and it is free to grab. Links are down below. All right, let's continue. Now, one thing we use our smartphones a lot uh, is for the phone. We call people, we receive calls all the time. So there's a couple of tactics you can actually modify in the actual phone application that are very handy to take and receive calls. So what you want to do is you want to go to your phone application and then tap on the settings over here and go right into the settings. And in the middle, it says answering and ending calls. If you click on this, uh, you'll see that you have a couple options here. So what you can do is you can enable this option. It says press volume up to answer calls. So you can enable this. Now here's the volume uh, rocker. You've got volume down, volume up. Uh, if somebody calls you, instead of swiping on the screen, you can simply press the volume up key and that's going to actually answer the call and you can start talking. And of course, the other option that I use is uh, press power key to end calls. So if you enable this, you use the volume up to take the call and you use a uh, power key to end the actual call. I'm sure the power is not over here. That's the Bixby button. Uh, this is the power key. That's the key you press to end the call. So again, very convenient options uh, to manage your calls, all right? Uh, you get some hardware keys to manage mostly used functions on your actual phone. All right, so let's move on to the next tactic. Now let me go to my messages here and let me bring up the keyboard. And as you can see, the keyboard looks a little bit different than the one that you're used to. You're used to the keyboard that has a white background. So what you can do uh, you, is you can go to the settings and then what you can do is you can go to the keyboard layout and feedback. You tap on this guy. And over here, you have a new option called keyboard themes. So if you go to the keyboard themes, you can, you can pick between uh, four different layouts. Now, this is the one that you're used to. This is one option that you have. This is another option that you have. And this is also the option that I like to use uh, as of now. So this is uh, this looks like the regular Android stock keyboard. And it's um, it doesn't have the the lines, the key uh, layouts. So I just kind of like uh, the way this one looks. It looks a little bit more futuristic, but that's one option that you have. You also have the option to enable a high contrast keyboard. Uh, if you turn this on, if you go back out uh, to the text messages, it's gonna look exactly like that, okay? So again, let's go back to the settings. I don't like this one too much, but you do have that option. So if you uh, enable this, this gets disabled. And if you disable this, this one gets enabled. Now the next step also resides in this layout. So what you can do is you can change the keyboard size and layout. Now again, a uh, keyboard is something we use all the time for typing. So uh, to modify this and to customize it is very important. So if you go to the keyboard size, 
uh, what you can do is you can change the layout of the keyboard. You can make it bigger if you, if you have big hands, or if you have small hands, you can make it even smaller uh, for easy typing. What you can also do is you can disable the number keys so they disappear. Then you would have to press this button to bring them up. As you can see, they're on the top here. I prefer to have them right here so then uh, it looks just like this. All right, let's go back out. So that's the keyboard uh, size and layout. And of course, one very important thing is uh, if you go into the actual keyboard, uh, the phone is a large phone. This, is, this phone has a 6.4 inch display and sometimes it is very hard to type with one hand. Uh, in fact, almost impossible if you have small hands. Now there's actually a uh, trick for that. What you wanna do is you wanna tap this arrow at the bottom and then it says one-handed keyboard. You tap on it and boom, the keyboard gets minimized and you can either uh, right justified or left justified uh, based on which hand you're holding your phone with. Now when you hold your phone with one hand, your thumb can reach the entire keyboard and you can type much easier. And if you're holding with your other hand, you can do it from this side. You can do it from this side. Absolutely fantastic. Let me just keep this at the maximum right now. Uh, of course, to go back again, you tap on that button, uh, you tap on standard keyboard and boom, you're right back into business. All right, so the next tactic has to do with your phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call myself right now. So when I call myself, as you can see, uh, the whole phone application is gonna launch and it's gonna start to ring. Okay, so let's wait for that for a couple seconds. There we go. So I ended that call. Now if you're, if I am in an application, let's say I'm in an application, I'm reading a message or watching a movie or whatever, uh, this actually, when somebody calls you, the whole phone app launches and then you lose all the uh, information that you're looking at right there. Now there's a way to fix this. What I can do is I, I can go to the, uh, I can go into the phone, I can go into the settings over here. And if I go at the bottom, it says show calls in a pop-up. So I can enable this show calls in a pop-up. And now what happens is let's say that I'm watching a movie or I'm reading a message and let me dial myself one more time. If somebody calls me, uh, instead of getting the entire screen turned into a phone, uh, it's only going to be a little pop-up on the top over here, which is much more convenient. So let me show you guys that real quick. I'm calling myself right now. There we go. Okay. So that's much better than the entire screen getting covered. If you do want to go full screen, you can tap this and boom, you're back in business. All right. So that is another tip for the phone option. Now the other tip I want to talk about has to do with the performance of your smartphone. So with the Android system, it's always a good idea to reset or restart your phone every now and then. Now we don't always remember that. I keep people, uh, I keep telling people to do that, but they don't ever remember to do that. So uh, this phone has a built-in option to do it automatically for you uh, to restart your phone in certain intervals. So go to the settings and then go into the general management. And then at the bottom, go to reset. And here you have the auto restart option, which is under phone management. So this is gonna optimize your phone by restarting it at automatically once a week. So enable the option and then go inside. And all you have to do is pick a time and a day of the week to automatically restart the smartphone. So the time could be 3 a.m. when you're sleeping if you're not a nocturnal animal like me. And uh, if you, uh, you can pick something like a Sunday, that's not a very important day for some people. And then what's gonna happen is every Sunday at 3 a.m. the phone is going to restart and it's basically gonna flush the system out and it's gonna give you a better performance. Now you don't have to do this every other day. Uh, Android is not designed to be restarted every day. You don't have to. Uh, but once a week is absolutely uh, fantastic. Now, one more thing you just want to be aware of is if you do set this option, you do have to meet these conditions for the auto restart to take effect. Now, the other thing that I absolutely love, if you press the recent keys button is you get these uh, cards. OK, so these are the uh, applications you're using at the time. Uh, so you can uh, basically go over them. You know, you can tap and go right inside it and blah, blah, blah. What I don't like is they take too much space on the screen. And sometimes when you have 20, 30 apps running, uh, it just makes too much clutter and going through all of these cards is a pain in the ass. So what I like to do is tap this button and go from the thumbnail view to the list view and then they get organized nice and cool at the bottom here. So if I had multiple one of these, let, let me just open a couple more here. 
So let's open WhatsApp, let's open camera. Now when I tap on this, you'll see that it's gonna look just like this as opposed to the thumbnail view uh, that is simply too cluttered. And again, you can swipe these away or just exit out. And you can also start multitasking with these uh, if you so desire, okay, just like that. It works just like the thumbnail view, but the size are much more compact, much more nice. All right, so let's move on to the next tactic. Uh, if you go to the settings, and if you go into accessibility, uh, what you can do from here, from dexterity and interaction, is enable this secret menu known as the assistant menu. So if I enable this, boom, I'm going to have a little menu that just floats about on the screen, this guy right here, and I can tap on this to access a bunch of, a bu a bunch of settings, uh, such as going back to the home screen, if I tap it again, I can go back. So it's replicating the keys at the bottom here. I can do recent apps. Uh, I can tap on it. I can pull down the notifications panel just by using this button. Tap the bottom option here and it can go to the next level. So I can change the volume from here. Okay, I can tap it again. Uh, I can lock the phone from here if I so desired. Again, all using software keys, which is absolutely fantastic. I can also take a screenshot on the go. All right. Now, if you go back to the settings and if you go into the accessibility uh, right here, back in here, uh, you can tap on this side and it's going to take you into the details of this menu. And here you can make some modifications. So here's the button. I can make it like this, transparent, or I can make it very visible. And you have assistant plus options. I just want you guys to come here and play with these. You can set all these options and modify this little key, uh, this little button. So this button can become a powerhouse if you so desire. So all the options are right here. All right, let's turn this off. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a couple more things uh, regarding your Samsung Galaxy Note 9, uh, which will enhance your ownership of this uh, magnificent device. But if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, just drop them down below. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. Guys, have a fantastic day.